In order to load it, you simply rotate it like this, okay? Do what we gotta do here first. What we gotta do. Putting two pounds, 8.3 ounces. All right, Billy, get off of me. Stop messing around. Let's do this thing here. Right here we go. Here we go. Ah. What is going on, everyone? Riddick here, and welcome to Off the Shelf Air Guns. Today we got a new one from Crossman. That is the Crossman Vantage Plus. This is the Vantage Plus. So obviously the original Vantage was a wood stock. This is a polymer stock and a stock that <laughs> quite resembles the Prospect in many ways. And I like that because I like the funky stock on the Prospect. All right. Now this is a, I would say this is probably one of the most affordable multi-shot brake barrels you can get. Very budget friendly as far as a multi-shot brake barrel goes. However, with that said, being that it is very budget friendly, you'll see why here in a minute. This I did obtain locally off the shelf. So there's that, all right? I do have my Discovery Optics scope on here because this guy is a little jumpy, even though it's a nitro piston, it is a little jumpy, all right? And so I put that on here just for the shock absorption purposes. And I did try to use the packing scope when I was testing this out and getting ready to film. And, you know, sometimes those packing scopes, they last a little while and do decent for a little while. Mine lasted about three shots and then I heard something rattling around in it and it won't hold zero. So that's just like any of these packing scopes with these budget friendly air guns. They're just not that great. They're not good. They fit. Sometimes they'll last a little while and you'll be okay. And other times, they just go right down the toilet immediately. Well, in this case, it went down the toilet immediately. So I had to put my Discovery Optics on there and now we're rocking and rolling, all right? So get up close here. You got your trigger safety here, forward safety, like we've seen on many of these brake barrels. This one's a little beefier than, than the normal ones. Like you can hear the audible click when you hit that one, all right? Nice rubber butt pad on the back there. Trigger is plastic, unfortunately, but I mean, once again, this is budget friendly, all right? And uh, now, okay, like I said, I got the Discovery Optics on there. It is an 11 millimeter dovetail, so if you wanna put something on there, make sure you got 11 millimeter dovetail or at least an adapter to go from dovetail to pick, to pick or pick a tinny, whatever, right? This is the 22 caliber. These do come in 177 caliber. Now, you'll notice the barrel shroud is much like the many different Crossman brake barrels. You know, it's like standard, okay? It's like that standard barrel shroud. Now, here's the caveat with this being a budget multi-shot. I'm gonna show you right now, okay? You break the barrel, and you have to, in order to get to the clip. And yes, I said it's a clip, because for all intents and purposes, it is a clip. It is not a magazine. This is a manually operated clip. So let's bring this in and show you what I mean. So here it is. It does not remove. You cannot remove this. It is permanently fixed to the barrel, okay? In order to load it, you simply rotate it like this, okay? Simply rotate it in order to load it. Now. If you wanna clean it or you need to clean it up or you wanna get it a little easier to load, you can take the shroud of it off like so, okay? And you can take the shroud off like that and then you can load it like that, all right? Now, the other thing I'm gonna say is you always wanna make sure those are nice and flush. Definitely make sure those are flush and just make sure it's like that every time you go to take a shot. And I will say this also, because I know some people are gonna think well, you break it and then just pop it back up and it cycles. No, this is manual. Like I said, this is a clip, not a magazine. So every time you break the barrel, you broke the barrel, 
hold on to the barrel. Can't stress that enough. In fact, this kind of makes you hold on to it because you gotta hold on to it to do such. But when you break the barrel, you have to cycle it yourself like that and then put the barrel back up, okay? Break the barrel, cycle it, put it back up. And there will be a little notch so you know that you're lined up perfectly. It clicks right in place just fine, but there is a little notch under each thing that lines up with a little line right here so you know where you're at, okay? And it only goes one way, you can't turn it the other way. So once again, because I know this is a little bit different setup than maybe other things have been in the past. There probably is other ones out there like this, but this is the first one I've had like this. Break the barrel. You do the adjustment yourself. You turn the clip yourself, barrel goes up. Now, also, when the barrel goes up, let me get this set up. So once again, break the barrel, turn the clip, you're ready to go. And when you put the barrel back up, make sure you don't hold it up in the air because sometimes your pellets will fit snug in there, but other times they'll fit loose. And if they were loose and you bring it up like this, it's just gonna fall out. But that's with any brake barrel really. So kind of point it down and then lock it, all right? Obviously common sense, but sometimes common sense isn't so common out there, all right? So, they claim upwards of 900 FPS, of course, with alloy in the 22 version, and 21 foot-pounds of energy. So this is great for pesting and small game hunting. You will definitely be able to do that with this. And yeah, there's really not much more to say except, let's go ahead and check it out. Here we go. All right, we're over here at the stable table. We're going to obviously do some, we're gonna do a little plinking at the beginning here, and then we're gonna do a little bit of the ambient audio test, trigger pull test, and a little bit of an accuracy test at 20 yards. We've got a target set up at 20 yards right now, so we'll see what happens. You got the barrel, break the barrel down, load your pellet, cycle to the next one, load it, next one, load it, so forth, so on. I know I got two to load in here. There we go. Like so and make sure they're flush because if they're not flush and you come up with it, it's gonna pinch them and bend them and everything else and that's not good, all right? Another one of those little wonky things about this that uh, I personally am not a big fan of. I'm not a big fan of the attached magazine. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, I don't mind necessarily the clip action having to rotate it, but you know, hey, like I, like I said, this is budget friendly way more so than any of the other multi-shot brake barrels. And uh, what are you gonna do, right? That's just the way it goes. And I mean, hey, if you're using this for pesting and stuff, you may only need the six shots. It is a six shot clip. Okay, so we're not talking about 12 or 10. It is a six shot clip, okay? So you may only need that if you're doing some pesting and things like that. So just keep all that in mind, folks. Keep all that in mind. This, this isn't gonna be for everybody, I can promise you that. It is, however, super budget friendly. Somebody wants a multi-shot brake barrel, they don't want to get into any of the other stuff. This, that, and the third. One thing's for sure, you ain't gonna lose the magazine or clip out of this, so <laughs> it'll always be there. We are using the Crossman Ultra Magnums 14.3 grain. Now, here we go. Let's start it out the right way because there's only one way to start it out. Yeah, just me. Whoa, don't do that, Billy. Billy's already at work. Ah, yes, good old Billy. <laughs> All right, let's go and uh, do what we got to do here first. What we got to do. Pating! That's right. We got a pating. We got a pating. Rotate that. You might be can, you might be saying to yourself, the magazine's sticking up like that. Does it get in the way of the scope? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's okay. Let's go, uh, huh. I don't know about that. We'll try it though. Try one of them little spinners. Oh my goodness. Pink, we did it. Ah. Uh, that was kind of a clink, a kernel clink, right? 
a little putt tink. So, patings just fine. Now what I want to do is ambient audio. We'll do we'll do one ambient audio. I think one will be plenty to get the idea of what we're dealing with here as far as how it sounds. How's it going to sound at the neighbor's house? Neighbor's over there. You're over here. You want to do uh, some plinking or you're doing some pesting. What are the neighbors going to hear? That is the question, right? So here we go. We're going to switch over to the standalone audio recorder that's out at a distance so we can get an idea of what it's sounding like at the neighbor's house. Here we go. There you go. Now it has a little bit of bark, but it's not that bad. If you've ever uh, seen the F4 or Crossman Fire or any of those along that line, it's pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. Uh, but being that this is a 22 and like the F4 is a 177, the F4 sometimes has a little bit more crack because it's traveling a little faster. But uh, this, you know, I think it's perfectly fine. In a tight little suburban neighborhood, maybe not. But you be the judge. You heard it. So, all right. Now, trigger pull. Let's do a little trigger pull real quick. And then we'll do accuracy at 20 yards. And don't dry fire these. No matter how tempted you may be, always make sure that your pellet is in that clip before you take a shot. Because I'm telling you, dry firing a brake barrel like this, a gas piston one, it can just make everything go all sorts of out of whack and then it's done for. If you dry, you don't want to dry fire these folks. All right, so do not dry fire them. Make sure you always got a projectile that you're working with here. Okay. All right, let's get this going here. You're probably not going to see this one. Well, maybe you will. All right, let's get this going here. Trigger pull test. Here we go. I even get it in there with that thing in the way. I think so. All right, here we go. And two pounds, 8.3 ounces. And there you go, two pounds, 8.3 ounces. Hopefully you can see that there. So the trigger pull, and it didn't feel bad, you know, it has not felt bad, so I kind of figured that's where we'd be at with it. So yeah, 2.2 pounds, 8.3 ounces. So I'd say that's pretty good. And I don't think it's adjustable. Yeah, I don't think it's adjustable, folks. So you're gonna have to just stick with that. But hey, it's actually not that bad. It's actually not that bad. Now, before we go into the accuracy, I'm going to go over one other thing. And this is something you should do with all your air guns when you get them brand new off the shelf. When you get one and you get it off the shelf or you order it or anything like that, you should always do this. I don't talk about this enough and I really should. I just assume people should know to do this, but I know there's people that just don't think about it. When you get any air gun for that matter, no matter what it is, but especially brake barrels and things like that, you got to clean the barrel. Get yourself a, a nice gun cleaning kit with 177 and 22 uh, cleaning rods and things like that and clean the barrel because I'm telling you, when I got this thing, it was absolutely just miserable. It was so filthy. Like I went through at least 15 pads and by the time I got to the 15th pad, it was still almost all black. And then another five pads to finally get it kind of cleared up. And I just used good old hops bore cleaning uh, oil or whatever through there and then run dry pads through there to really dry that up because you don't want that just sopping everywhere. Once you get all the gunk out, the black stuff, you can go ahead and once you have it fairly clean, then you can go ahead and use some of the hops gun cleaning oil, run that through there. Bore cleaner, I should say. Sorry, hops bore cleaner. I just, you know, I say stuff anyway the hops bore cleaner, you can run that through there, all right, and really get it cleaned up, and then take some more pads to dry it, Nice, give it a nice dry by taking some clean dry pads through there, and uh, just get it cleaned up because it's really, like this was bad, really bad, and you ain't gonna do any kind of accuracy or anything like that when it's that bad. It may still be a little wonky because it's, uh, it still needs clean, like it's still pretty, dirty by my standards. I mean, generally it's probably good now, but 
I still think it's dirty. It could go for another 20 pads worth. So just keep that in mind. And that's with any air guns, folks, okay? Just keep that in mind. So let's do some accuracy, shall we? Let me go ahead and we're gonna load this back up. Six shots, we'll take six, we'll take, uh, six shots. Down there, I got a splatter burst, four inch splatter burst, 20 yards. And again, this may be a little wonky because of the barrel still being, needing a better cleaning than, than it already has had. But it might be okay, it might be okay. It didn't do too bad when I was sighting in the scope. So, I mean, I was just cleaning it and cleaning it and cleaning it. And I'm just like, you gotta be kidding me with this. So, you know, I wasn't just gonna sit here all day and night cleaning the gun when I wanna make a video. So here we go. Cleaned it as much as I could. I think we're okay. So let's go ahead and see what we can do here. Okay. Get this thing situated. This thing situated. Billy better not be out there or else we're gonna have some serious problems. I think I taught him a lesson last time. We'll see though. All right, here we go. Okay. It's a little, a little low. Not terrible. A little low. All right, just keep at it. We're gonna keep right after it where we're at here. Yeah, I totally. <laughs> oh man, that was so my fault. It's not even funny. All right. Keep on going here. I did it again. I did it again. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, this, this sucker is a little jumpy compared to other brake barrels. It's got some, some pop to her. I'm almost half tempted to strap the front end down on it here. Should we strap the front end down on it? I mean, I'd have to do it every single time I take a shot, but uh, nah, we'll just leave it alone. We'll just leave it alone. Oh, I'm hitting the outside. Oopsie. You know what I need to do? Make one minor adjustment here. Um, no, it's not as windy as it was earlier. Not as windy as it was earlier. Let's see if that helps. See if that does anything there, Sonny. <laughs> We'll find out, won't we? All right. I'm on now. Oh, jeez. <laughs> God dang it. Calm down now, Billy. Billy done coming over here behind me and shaking my shoulders every time I go to take a shot. You know that? It's enough to make you nuts. All right, Billy, get off of me. Stop messing around do this thing here right here we go here we go ah a little higher than I wanted <laughs> and this bucker I tell you what this bugger is a little jumpy it's something I'm gonna have to get used to or we can strap it down we can strap it down I don't really want to but we can we can, I don't know, we'll do one more clip. One more clip. And then we'll call it a day. It's not grouping that great right now, 20 yards. There's a couple reasons for that. I'm not gonna blame it on the gun just yet. Obviously we're gonna come back and do more videos on this to really, really see what's going on. 
as of it as it stands right now two reasons that it's a little jumpy is well me first of all <laughs> and then it is a little bit of a jumpy gun and it does i mean the barrel is just so filthy i mean i spent literally 45 minutes cleaning it and it's still dirty so let's try it let's try it strap down one one time just because i feel like it how about that okay oh that worked better i think that worked better having it strapped down although the problem is you got to sit here and do this every time not a problem when you're using your firearms obviously <laughs> Or PCP. Uh, okay, get out of here, fuzzy. Or PCP for that matter, naturally. But that's not what we're using, buddy. All right, here we go. I so totally did, like, dude, really? Really? <laughs> I can't believe I did that. I cannot believe I did that. I went and when I grabbed the front end to stable it, I didn't even grab the gun. <laughs> I grabbed the lead sled. Even though it's strapped down, that's not really what you want to do. And it's still going to jump. And this thing jumps, I'll tell you what. Out of all the brake barrels I have, and I have ones that jump pretty good. But this one, this one, I mean, I actually, when I was sighting it in earlier i got a little bruise on my shoulder i'm not even kidding it's ridiculous it's like what am i out here shooting my damn 12 gauge or what hey 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 all right all right here we go and there we go now see that's starting to look a little better we're getting a little group going there up in that corner that's what we want that's what I'm trying to do. We're looking good. Let's see if I can keep it there without the strap, because that's getting annoying. <laughs> that's getting so annoying. We're not doing that again. That's just adding more work than I don't want to do. All right. Let's see what we can do. Oh, there we go. Still not the most perfect thing in the world, but at least we're, we're staying in range of what we wanted to do. Staying in range of where we are where we want them to go again just a little four inch target out there 20 yards let's keep going until we're out here Oop. that one jumped on me a little bit so it went off to the side well no big deal no big deal last one Last one. Here we go. Last one. I mean, we lit up that target pretty good at least, right? Here we go. Here we go. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, well. All right. Man, this sucker, I tell you what. I'll tell you what. It's got some punch. It's got some punch. You may think I'm crazy, but I mean, I... I <laughs> my shoulder is actually bruising from it. So if that tells you anything, I don't know. Normally, air guns don't bruise my shoulder. My 12 gauge bruises my shoulder. My 16 gauge, that's right, good old 16 gauge. You haven't heard that in a while, have you? That one bruises my shoulder a little bit. But an air rifle? air rifle i'll show you here in a minute when we get in i can't show it's the lighting's not great here we'll go over there give you my final thoughts here for this video because we're going to do more videos on this and really delve in to see what we can get out of it right after we've put so many shots through it i've already put about i'd say mm, 70 shots through it so i think after a good 100 maybe 200 shots we might see that accuracy start to tighten up especially with cleaning the barrel and everything else like I have been doing. And I think we're going to be okay, but we will keep going after this and see what we get in, in future videos. So let's go ahead over there and I'll give you my final thoughts on it as of right now.
All right, so there you have it, Crossman Vantage Plus. And uh, pretty decent, pretty decent for what it is. Like I said, a super budget friendly multi-shot brake barrel. One of the, I think it's gotta be the most budget friendly multi-shot brake barrel, I think it is. I think maybe Hotson has one that's almost kinda like it, but I think aside from that, hot on one and I can't remember the name of it right now I think uh, aside from that this would be your most budget friendly and this one can be found locally off the shelf all right so just keep your eyes peeled if you're interested in this uh, is it perfect no it's really not at all perfect by any means you're gonna have to get a different scope I don't trust the pack-in scopes mine didn't last more than three shots I tried because people ask me, use the, they say, you know, use the packing scope. I want to see how good it is. Well, dude, it lasted three shots. I can't. All right. So I had to go with Discovery Optic Scope here, which is great for these jumpy guns. And this sucker is jumpy. All right. Let me, <laughs> I'm going to show you here. Look at that. Look at that. It's literally bruised my shoulder. Can you believe that? An air gun. An air gun. You think I'm out here with my 12 gauge and my 16 gauge and I'm just going to town all day long with 15 boxes of shells or something, right? No, no, just a good old Vantage Plus. <laughs> so when I tell you the sucker's got some, some jump, I'm not saying, I mean, you can say recoil and then the firearm guys will come in and say, it's not real recoil. No kidding, Dick Tracy. I'm a firearms guy too, so save it, okay? This it's jumpy you know uh it's like springer jumpy even though it's a gas piston i think it's a gas piston well, let me go check that real quick because i don't want to i don't want to say that and then here it's a springer or whatever you know i thought it was a gas piston let's find out if i'm right all right folks yes it is indeed a nitro piston usually it says it on here but it does not say it today but it did confirm on the box that it is a nitro piston, much like, you know, the F4 and the fire, and it's, it's very similar. But, man, it, it's got, I don't know if it's got extra oomph or something, but, I mean, my other ones aren't that crazy. But this thing, I mean, it's like, it's all kinds of crazy, jumping all over the place. So, keep that in mind. may not be for the younger folks if uh, <laughs> they're not looking to have a sore shoulder at the end of the day, because this definitely will create a sore shoulder if you're out there sighting it in and plinking and everything else a few shots ain't going to do that to you but i mean like i said i literally put like 75 shots through it just today okay so probably didn't help the situation but yeah it's uh it's a, it's, a, it's a jumpy critter it's a jumpy critter but hey it's a budget air gun folks so what do you want that's the way it is again you can find these off the shelf locally so if you're interested, stay tuned because we will have a lot more videos on this coming soon. A lot more tests, a lot more experiments we're going to do with this and see what we can really get out of it. See how it performs after many, many shots have been through it, so forth and so on. And with that said, I will catch you all down the road.